Welcome to the Spiritual Artist Podcast. This is Chris Miller. I invite you to join me as I interview artists from a variety of disciplines. We'll share powerful stories and lessons learned while making their art. Good day. This is Chris Miller with the Spiritual Artist Podcast. I have a very special guest today, um, mainly because I've known her for a very long time, and yet I haven't seen her in a very long time. Uh, Leonore took a class with me probably more than 20 years ago um, in art, and it's when I first started painting. So she was in the beginning of this journey for art. What's amazing is Leonore and I sort of gravitated together in class and we became best of friends. And I'm not sure why at the time, but now, 20 years later, I look back and I think, ah, I see what our connection was. And I think it's because we see more in art than just the act of, of painting or drawing. We see some sort of a spiritual connection to it. So uh, Leonore is here with me. She is a visual artist. She is a graphic designer and best yet, something new, uh, a visual poet. Uh, good morning, Leonore. Good morning, Chris. A pleasure to see you. You made me feel old 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was like we have different lives, right? So that was my life in Texas, which, is, which was wonderful. <laughs> well, that's great. And hey, I don't know if I gave your full name. Leonore Alvam Brazen. Is that correct? Yeah, Leonore Alvin Brazo. <laughs> which is which is interesting because when we talked earlier you know you talk about the translation from language and how, how it affects your poetry and um we could pick up there but let's first talk about these books that you shared with me um you shared two books with me one is called the flight or flight and one is called women um both are delightful but i have to tell you when i sat down uh, Wednesday night, I think, and just got quiet and read these poems in women. Um, and I'm gonna share a couple of them with you, but they really did, uh, they moved me. It was quite moving. Um, not only are the drawings fantastic, but the poetry itself is very, very moving. Oh, so. thank you, Chris, thank you. Um, I am always concerned about um, the poetry because when I write, I write in my, um, native language, which is Portuguese. And it's a process, um, it's not all, all about the words, but the sounds of the words. So I'm always afraid when you translate to another language that you lose that, you have to keep the meaning, but that flow that you, you have, you lose it because sometimes it doesn't make sense <laughs> in another language. Yes. You know, I, I, I remember you saying that and, and um, I'm gonna, we're gonna, I want to read a poem on here to you and to, to our listeners because I love it. And I think it leads into what we were going to address here. And it's called, okay, it's called The Line. Okay, so The Line. She drew the line, continuous, like a river that flows without destination. A line that has no middle beginning or end, but has marked out the frontiers of its space, giving form to its message. This line which she nourished and let define her voice, enhance her soul, a line that ran through days and nights, valleys and mountains, a drawn out journey, guarded in a small notebook, some scribbles without importance in a world where she had no place. It was woman who was drawing. I, I just love it. It looks nice when you read it, Chris. <laughs> 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 and I'm happy that um, you, you connected even, this is a translation. So of course I had a wonderful translator. I, I didn't translate it, <laughs> but um, I'm very pleased with the result in English actually. <laughs> I'm surprised, so wonderful. I but thought I'd share that with you because the pulse, yeah. the pulse of it, the, where you choose to have a comma, where you break, and where you, the emphasis is 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 beautiful, and the and the drawing with it as well. Um, so 
I it's wanted all it. It's all connected. It all they all come from the same place. So is the line, the line that moves, and is the sound that moves too. So it's like a pulse, right? Like a melody, like a music, the way written, and there's the silence. And so um, I don't know if you know, I, I, I was trained as a musician as well. Uh, as a, I was a violoncellist for a long time. And recently I'm back playing. I have no aspirations, <laughs> but uh, I recovered that part of myself. But it's about the sound, it's about the line and all have the same principles. Uh, so how I start drawing, how I start uh, writing as well. It follows the same path, let's say it. Which leads me to the question, do you write the poem first or do the drawing first? You know, it's interesting that question because I think it was kind of simultaneous, but I didn't know they were coming together. It's just, uh, um, I just, I'm always drawing. I draw it like almost every day and, and in the poems just came to my head and I just um, sometimes I just write whatever I am can be on my phone can be a computer can be on a paper and later on I gather them together and then um, I don't think about what I'm going to do it, ju it just comes to me you know and I start to register either through drawings or either through writings. So, um, and then I realized, oh, these are all women. Let's, <laughs> let's put them together. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't look like when you hear, but that's what, how it was. And of course, some of them I drew after. And some of them, oh, I have this poem and this goes along with that one. Oh, this one does have a drawing. Let me do the drawing now, so. Well, they, they just seem, um multimedia true multimedia you know they seem very much the same um this drawing and i i will overlay some of these drawings um and share with our viewers on youtube but the drawing uh woman 31 i think it's is what they have here but tell me about this drawing and how you do it and where this comes from what why it's so very unique this is very unique to you this style thank you chris so um I start drawing when I was a very, very young child. I don't even remember when. when. I was very shy. Now you have to stop me to talk. But <laughs> at, the, <laughs> at the time, I was really, really shy. And it was very hard for me to, to speak and to communicate through words. So it was easier for me to draw. To, to draw. And I remember uh, drawing notes to my mother about things I want to communicate and leave the notes throughout the house to see if she'll find them. <laughs> <laughs> and looking back looks very weird <laughs> but it's I different mean, it's different but that's how it was it was always easier for me to to draw so I was always exploring of course my mother was an artist so uh, it was a natural thing in my house you know to to do art and uh, but I think the clique came later it was uh, in college I had two wonderful teachers one was very academic so we did all these things about volume and shading and uh, real realistic drawings uh, of people. You know, we had uh, live models. We we drew buildings, landscapes, still life, all these things. And I did well on that class. I just I just didn't like it, but I did it. <laughs> but then I had another teacher <laughs> who really was um, amazing. She wanted all of us in the class to find our own voice. So she had this exercise uh, that you had to draw with a pencil uh, or any other media, but uh, we start with pencil uh, and we covered our hands so we couldn't see what we're doing. She wants us to learn how to see, how you see. So not only in terms of knowing the proportions and the shade and everything, but she wants us, us to translate that uh, through our own mark and uh, so we covered the hand looking to the person or to a still life at home I wear the cat so I was always chasing the cat, <laughs> to <laughs> the cat. and it was a continuous line she didn't want her, her, us to to stop you know to to, to raise our hands so it so it was you know was that line that line I'm talking about the line just moves and flows and in and, and it was very interesting because everyone had different marks and at a certain point at the end of the, the 
the, the course, you know, the months, uh, we were actually drawing pretty similar what we were seeing. But on the meantime, all these monsters that we did, uh, mm -hmm. that she called the monsters, they were very interesting. And she said, never stop doodling. She really encouraged us to do, uh, she called our monsters, always, you know, whatever you are, just doodle, just doodle, because these are yours, no, no one else. So, and then you can use them and work on them on your paintings or your drawings or any media, media you explore. So that's how it starts. And it, so for me, it's like, um, it's like an energy, like uh, for me, like um, an energy that you capture, like almost a sketch. Uh, if something is floating, if something is a passage. Um, and I like that sense, like an ethereal um, yeah. feeling, you know, of something that is moving. It's not only that. It, it might be also because I studied arts, I studied music, so the sound, I studied dance, so it all comes together on those draw drawings. And I love animation too, I'm not an expert, but you know, it's that sense of color, sound, movement, and <clears throat> that I put together on those drawings. Okay, Leonore, I love that description because in my book, The Spiritual Artist, I talk about discovering your creative DNA. Uh, Twyla Tharp is someone that introduced that concept that we all are totally unique. And, and if we just explore that, and so the way this teacher was working with you is she says that you have symbols, like symbols that define who you are, or explain that more, these monsters that you talk about. I, I don't know if it's exactly symbols. Um, I might repeat some of these drawings over and over because I like them, but uh, I change all the time. So you, you, you have seen my artwork, you saw the two books of poetry, they are different. What is common in, the, in them is the process of doing them. They are kind of almost like sketches and it's like a line that moves around like an energy, you know, it's like something is flow, it's like an energy I capture and there's no end. So, and that's how I lear learned to draw with her. Start with the, with your, mark on the paper and just move it and don't you know just stay on the paper so uh it's like it is a movement it's like a movement it's energy for me like i, I captured this energy and, and i express it um on a drawing on a symbol or on a monster whatever you want to call it yeah and, and that's what you saw on the book of the women um there's a lot of energy because it, women are complex right and you saw some uh, overlapping of drawings and some of them like they are uh complex and they coexist so women are complex we are so sensitive and we represent so many things you know um so many emotions so that's what, what i try to convey uh with those drawings the faces on these drawings um and and i encourage our listeners to go buy your books because oh, the face you. yeah the faces are so full of emotion you know there's yeah. such a strong sense of in in a, in a what you would call a line drawing um but they are very unique and i remember way back when we were in that class um that you were still, there were shapes, there were similar shapes. There's a curvaceousness. Uh, there's, a, there's a repetitive symbols in those shapes that seem to be, that you gravitate toward, you know, that seem to be yeah. very unique to you. Yeah, the, sh the shapes are very round and women uh, are all chabby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how I ended, <laughs> I'm just kidding. So you, you said, let's just uh, talk about the emotion. So I come from two cultures, very emotional. Uh, I was born Portuguese and we are all about emotions. And then I lived in Brazil, where is the festivity of emotions. And there's a lot of beauty in that. People are very generous uh, expressing uh, emotions. So I think I try to pass that on my drawings and that's how I feel too. I'm very emotional. Um, sometimes that's look like, I look like I'm distracted, but no, I feel a lot. <laughs> So that's a way for me to express those emotions. And about the lines, I think it's also about maybe the Brazilian culture where um, the curves on women are very appreciated. So maybe thinking about that, I never thought about that, but I think might be where it comes from. There's beauty, there's beauty in curves, you know? 
That's interesting because there is a there was a there was a poem in here about uh, the Me Too, Me Too, uh, which is very strong and powerful. Um, hashtag Me Too, and that I think that does address that uh, the, the the physicality of women and and uh, embracing it as, as opposed to shaming it. What did that poem come out of? Um, in, in your yeah, I think, well, there's the movement, right? I think the problem exists throughout years in, in everything, um, in, ev in all the countries. But I think people are talking more about and shaming <laughs> men yeah. who don't respect. So I just wanted to, um, you know, to register that. Me too, of course. I was uh, exposed to situations that I didn't like. Uh, I raised my voice. Um, so I didn't let that uh, control my life. But I think uh, every woman has a story to tell. Um, I don't know if you mind to read the poem because I don't remember all the lines. <laughs> well, I, if you have it, you know what I was thinking, if, you, if you're willing, um, if you have it with you, to have you read it. Because I think that, you know how we talked about earlier about the melody of it? Yeah, I think, of course. Let yeah. me find it here. Give me one 29. Second. Yeah, I found it. I, and, and then you read it in English, right? Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I want them to hear the beautiful version okay. first. And then... Okay, so hashtag, eu também. Bonita ou feia, magra ou gorda, sensual ou masculina, as formas voluptuosas se lavam seu destino. Coberta da cabeça aos pés, ou mostrando o corpo esguio, era sempre culpada, ela. Ele... O homem predador ficava escondido na sua covardia. Yeah, it's a beautiful language. Thank you. Uh, Portuguese. Hmm. Very beautiful. So I will read it in English. It's not going to be as pretty, listeners, but some of you might understand it better. Hashtag me too. Beautiful or ugly. Skinny or fat. Sensual or rugged. Voluptuous figures sealed their destiny covered from head to toe, or revealing her elongated body, always at fault was she. He, the man, the predator, remained hidden in his cowardice. Mm. I, like it. I like it in English too. <laughs> I do, and I'll tell you what, the line, always at fault was she, whoa. I mean, I, it's giving me chills right now. It, yeah. It's such a powerful statement. I love it. I love it. I, I, I love how it embraces that, there, there, that position of whether the body is hidden from view or exposed, the woman is always guilty of the response. And that's not right. It's simply, yeah. it's not right. But it's changing. It's changing. Yeah, Don't you think so? I think it's. I hope so. I think so. I mean, as as long as as, as more and more people step up and and we we uh, uh, honor our the matri maternal side of our culture, you know. Yeah. And um, but it's it's beautiful and it's just haunting, haunting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. So um, tell tell uh, the listeners that that our artists are you using a certain type of pencil on these drawings? It looks like it's a mixture of pencil and watercolor. Yeah, well, this one, uh, I so I'm always exploring materials. I don't stay in one material. So when you, you met me years ago, uh, I was more doing acrylics. And then of course that class was about exploring other materials. So I start incorporating a lot. Remember, we use um, tissue paper, you use like eggshells. We were always trying to do I, something. I forgot. It's funny. I forgot until you just mentioned it. Now I yeah, see the eggshells. Yeah, yeah. That, that wonderful teacher, um, she was fantastic. So she encouraged us to explore and it was a perfect match for me because I'm always trying new things. So actually um, these drawings are done with a, a Portuguese material is a graffiti ink. Uh, I don't remember, the, uh, it's Artgraph, that's the brand. Artgraph. And it's very nice because they have pencils and also they have these graffiti tablets. So I draw with the pencil and then I, with the uh, water and, and the brush, 
um, I paint with the colors. They have like these beautiful um, earth tones. They have also have the blue that you saw on the flight uh, book and they have other colors. They have yellow, blue, but anyway, on these ones I use the earth tones and then with a, with a, with a brush and water, I do a wash. So then I move things around. And then if I let dry a little bit, I paint on the top. So that's how you have different image on top of each other, like it's layering, layered. Special the special the the front, the, the book cover. Oh, it which is which is beautiful. I love this technique. Um and so that's how you you bring back that sharp edge on the yes. top yes. by doing a, a pencil on top maybe. No, no, I start, I start with the drawing. <laughs> I start with the pencil, it's a graffiti pencil and I, I, I draw it. Uh, sometimes I even overlap drawings and then I paint and then it's like a wash with, with the water. Um, so I, I pull the color, sometimes I go and get the gray of the, of the pencil, of the graffiti. And then it's like this blending of colors that you see. Uh, there's an artist in Dallas that she actually uses um, tea, tea, and I think you would love that uh, yeah. because of the colors that she gets, and they're yeah. they're like yours. They're very organic and and warm, you know. Um, it's it's a great technique. Yeah, and, and you know these colors are new for me because uh, in the past I use a lot of flat colors and bright colors, which come from my ears in Brazil. All these. Um, exuberant colors, you know, and I think now I think um, I'm getting a little, I'm getting younger. <laughs> <laughs> so I think my art is being a little more pastel. <laughs> let's, let's <call> <laughs> well, it's a great combination. Yeah. You know, it, 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 they really are um, yeah. wonderful imagery. Yeah. And, yeah. and you see on the flight book, they are blue. They're all blue. Yeah. And, and it has this double symbol because it's a flight. So flight is in the sky and it's blue, but also is also about blues when you feel a little bit melancholic, melancholic because I wrote this book after my parents passed. So it was so much, so many emotions that I needed to express that some way. And uh, it was a time, I think everyone who, who lost parents knows it's like your roots <laughs> are taken. Yeah. And you need to find another place, <laughs> another roots, another way to, to ground yourself. So that's why it's a flight. I was flying. So I was trying um, to find my next interior place. And, and, and I fly through different areas of my life. So I feature people, uh, friends, family members, uh, situations, emotions, countries. Um, so it's really, it's, it's a flight, it's a flight. So how did you have, you? it sounds like this was your first book, The Flight? Yes, Flight was the, so it's the first time I wrote poetry. Poetry is not, was not part of me, Leonor. Uh, my, both my parents were poets and very good poets. Uh, and I always look at poetry like some, oh, it's too much. It's too much emotion, it's too much because I'm, <clears throat> even though I'm an artist, I'm very practical. I'm a doer. So for me, poetry is like, reflecting and uh, listen to your emotions. And so it was too, was too much, but yeah. So it was my first, um, my first book. And uh, the process was interesting because it's not um, a rational process. It's like, I, I hear these, these words, this melody and, and come, they come from a place I don't even know where it is. Uh, and then I just put them in words. So it's it's an interest. I don't know how to describe it, but it's a, an, a very spiritual process actually to write oh, poetry. Oh, well, you know, you know, I love that. And um, I uh, I do think it's when I paint the same thing that, that something come. I I describe it as a, as a greater power flowing through me. Exactly. Um, I think we talked about this, but I was raised Catholic, and. Um, as I grew older, I had issues, certain issues with the church. And so I, I felt like you talk about uh, kind of without roots. And for me, it was to, by doing art, you know, that, that stepping into the studio and stepping into that place, that consciousness where I'm, I'm listening to what's coming in and just reacting, you know, like 
like letting it happen, letting it unfold um, on the paper. And, and, and what I wanted to share so much and why I wanted to talk to you for this interview with my listeners is I do emphasize that if you're quiet and you stand in front of a canvas and let yourself just draw and scribble and do whatever, you will find marks that are unique to you, you know? You, you, and and you are such a perfect classic example of that. These marks are, are whether I see read the poetry or see the image, it's definitively you. You know, Chris, I think life is not about um, acquiring or having or adding. It's about let it go, and is that that's what you're saying? You have to be willing to let it go. And that starts by listening to yourself in his heart, in his heart. So uh, for me, the process, uh, I had that Catholic um, past too. And so I was born in a very Catholic country, Portugal at the time was very conservative. And at 13 years, I was, I had to move to Brazil and everything I learned before didn't work. <laughs> so I had to let it go <laughs> a lot of stuff and, and just, you know, figured out. So it was let it go and, and, and let other layers of myself to, to build and to recognize. So to survive another culture, another situation, another economical city, you know, it was a, a lot of change. It was just not an airplane in arrive. The, even the language is the same, but the way you structure the sentence, everything is different. So it was a let it go uh, a lot of, of patterns and, and be comfortable with new patterns, but where I don't lose my essence. So uh, later on, I moved to Portugal and it was a new country because of the revolution. It was more open to the world. So it was one more move. And I brought all these Brazilian um, cultural bag uh, baggage it was not well accepted because it was an European country and uh, there was a little resistance. <laughs> about, oh, wow. Yeah. So again, I had to let it go and find common ground inside. And so find my essence there where I deal with that, with all this information without losing myself, without keeping um, loyal to my essence. So everything is like floating around and I need to be Leonore, what, you know, whatever, when, whatever I am, um, I, I need to be myself, you know? So, and it's funny because uh, that can be translated in language. So when I speak to Portuguese, my Portuguese accent shows. When I speak to Brazilian, my Brazil, so, but I'm still <laughs> Leonore and I'm speaking my true, right? Uh -huh. And then when I come to the States, again, it was another culture everything I knew, <laughs> yeah, but not everything, because I, were, I was already more mature. So certain things, um, you know, how you old were you when you moved? How old were you when you moved to the United States? Uh, I was 36. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's a big change. It was a big change. I have two small kids. So I was always working, working, working. I work at the parties, you know, I'm in 10 cities, these multinationals. I work like 12 hours a day and then I, and I start having kids. So I came here with two small kids. So suddenly, I was home with two kids and I didn't know where to start <laughs> because I always had maids and people helping me and I was in the office and suddenly it was a new challenge for me. And, and I couldn't be always, uh, I couldn't be only at home. I needed to do something. So I really dedicate myself to, to painting and to find myself again, you know, to find that essence through my painting. And I, I did a lot and I uh, had several exhibitions and it was nice because I was in a small town in New Hampshire. And um, I think I was the big happening in the, in the town. So every time I did the show, everyone like published front page. I, I love that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, we're talking about um, find in art. So art really helps you to, to keep you grounded to yourself and let it go. Everything else is not needed. So I really find that. Um, life is about let it go, let it go, let it go and, and, and find your essence that is like a flame, right? That we have inside us um, that you can express to art. Yeah, it's, it's I think uh, people who, who have that art in their lives are really uh, blessed. I think it's a privilege. And I think, I believe everyone has that, that power of doing creative things, but 
some people uh, think that, oh, that doesn't give you money, that doesn't uh, give you a profession. And I think, I think you can do it. Even, even if you are a lawyer or a doctor, I think it's important to do art as well, as, as your own personal mark. You know, it's, it's important to register. Um, also, I feel like you as an artist, you are a tool to register the, the collective inconscient that is out there. I don't know if you feel like that way, Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of, uh, I think you do with your book, actually, yeah. because you are representing maybe a movement that was uh -huh. your approach. So you kind of capture the energies that are out there and you register with your art in your own way. So, and um, I believe uh, artists do, we, register big happenings like for example September 11 September 11 inspired me lots of series you know now the pan pandemic I did a lot of series as well and I know the poetry will come it, it didn't come yet I didn't force but I did a lot of nature because I thought nature was that's what we need to do is look back to you know mother heart and into nature and explore and um, I think it's so much beauty out there so uh, again, just let it go. What is out, st out there? Just don't focus on the problems. Focus on what you have, the beauty around you. Mm. So for me, it was the big lesson. Forget all the, I, I know it's some people are really suffering and um, I don't want to diminish what they're going through. I think it's, it's, it's terrible. But if you can find moments of solitude where you find beauty, where is the beauty in your life? And art can help you to to express that. Mm. Well, you know, I love that. I, <laughs> I do, and 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 I I think that taking that practice, I call it a spiritual practice. Um, every morning, I I describe it in my book, but I sit before my window and I look out at the yard, or I go out into the yard, and it's like you talk about that. It's a spiritual practice to ground yourself in the silence and in nature. And, um, and, and I see that in, in your, in your work, um, there is that strong maternal sense, you know, I, 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 it's not an irony that, that the book is called women, you know? Yes. So I have a wonderful mother, a very special, uh, woman being, um, she was, she was an artist. Uh, she was a visual artist. She worked more with textiles. She did these beautiful artworks, look like paintings, but were done with fabric. Uh, she was a musician. Um, of course, she stopped her career as a concertist when she married, but she was a piano uh, teacher, uh, but she played in several places. Um, and she also uh, did some works with dance. She played the piano for, for dance. Uh, so she was, and she was a poet. So she was multi-talented. And she was uh, an amazing, she was the, the mother of everyone. If you have ever met her, she will be your mother. She will be talking about <laughs> her. You know, everyone, I say, well, here's Leonor, here's Leonor. Stop talking about my mother. But I, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm not jealous. She was, she was amazing. <laughs> so um, the reference, the reference as a mother was um, someone who mother everyone because she right. felt like she was so rich that she needed to share and take care. And of course, for me, um, I became a mother and motherhood was, was amazing for me. That's where I understood the meaning of love, you know, and you have, you have, you have a kid too, Chris. Mm -hmm. so you can relate to that. You are not centered in yourself anymore. <clears throat> you are centered in someone else and um, you let go of yourself. Again, you let it go of yourself because the most important thing is that love that you have and you neuter someone else. And, and you are responsible and you know the impact in another woman being. Yeah, wow. No, definitely. Um, I, I often tell my friends that because I'm in a non-traditional relationship um, uh, to same-sex parents, and when we adopted Blake, um, I became the mom. I mean, there's no question that I stepped back from my career. I was the one that yeah. took him back and forth to Let school. Yeah. yeah. And it is. Very, yes. And, and you do you you surrender. I hate to say this, but in a way you surrender your identity for a while, for a while. And, I, and 
I don't think you surrender. You think you are because you, but you are working other things in yourself. Yes. You, you might think you are not uh, doing that much work. You are not doing, but it's it's a learning. And then when you go back, you realize how much you grew. You know how much how much you evolve. You know how much rich you are. How much more you have to give to the world to yourself. I think you know, and may and I I would say that you're correct. But in our in our society, we're we emphasize so much like the achievement you know, how much money you make and the job you have. And so for me as a, as a, as a man to surrender all that and, 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 and then to find your identity in those moments, those wonder, wonderful moments, I would never trade any of them, whether it's pushing him in a swing to wake, to comforting my son in the middle of the night when he's having a bad dream, to being by his side when he's sick, I would never surrender those moments. And yet, well, I, I can't remember which poem it was of yours, but you, there is a place where you, you have, you know, you let them free. Uh, you, oh, you, yeah, the poem I wrote to my daughter. That's a tough moment. <laughs> yeah, that is a tough moment. Yeah, that's right. Let me find it here. Yeah, yes, it's, it's that moment where you, you, and then you give it back. You you give this, this spirit, back, this creature back to life because it's his life. It's yeah. his life yeah, and, and her life. Again, you have to let it go. You have to let it go. It's a moment they go and you have to face it, accept it. And then you turn to yourself. And then that's when you realize how much you grew, you know, because, and then you see yourself on them and it's beautiful. You, again, they have their own sense. They will transform everything you gave their own way, but you see your mark there. You see your mark there and it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yes. It's beautiful. Yeah. Do you want me to read the poem? Or yes, you yes. Yes. What? Why, do why don't you read it in English? Because I like your accent. <laughs> <laughs> what page was that? Forty-one. Oh my gosh. That's what I'm telling you. There were so many moments in this reading this that they just took my breath away, and oh. and I I do feel like I have a. Uh, sympathy or a relationship or I understand what it is to be a woman in our society more than your average man because I had that experience absolutely it's the layers right that's what I'm saying is the is the complexity we, we have to deal with so many things at the same time you know in a workforce you know we are not valued it, we're not just something uh we're not paid the same uh we're expected more things oh definitely <laughs> you know, I, I more thing. And then we have the kids and we have a husband and, and we have one kid and one F2 is different because then you have to work on each one individually and the relationship between both. Yeah. So, it, so it is, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you, I'm glad you, you went through. So you are. Oh, you are, I did. I mean, you, you know, you, you have to, it's like, you're still expected to bring in some money, but you have to run the house and you have to raise the child and then you have to, Oh yes. Oh, yes. so I have, I have a, for total appreciation for women. Uh, okay, so here, here I will read it. It's it's called motherhood. Um, with wings I raised you to fly and discover your destiny. With these I saw you depart. With these I felt the sadness of being unable to follow you. It was with these that I saw you grow and leave the nest. I chose the stars that will illuminate your path. I planted the trees that will give you shade. I painted the world for your battles and I blew the wind of love, which will guide you. But the reality is what life will unfold to you. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, but it is. So you, you raise them with your principles, things you believe, you share your experience, you guide, you have expectations, which the kid will not be what you want. You have to accept that. And <laughs> oh, they yeah. They have wings and they go and you see your marks there, but they'll have their unique approach. They have their unique mission and, and it's, it's hard, but it's a wisdom that you learn to. It's to let it go one more time you give wings and they have their own path and sometimes they'll honor you sometimes they will not i've been blessed so far but <laughs> <laughs> oh it goes no. both ways no i mean and ways. i i think that's the 
Yeah. That's Don't as a mother, you, you, you let them do, you understand that they need to do it their way. They need to make it their own. And um, isn't that so interesting about what we're talking about, about you and your journey about learning how to paint and, and poetry and, and leaving notes for your mother. Um, you have found a way to make it your own. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. She was, she was uh, an influence, but she has her own style. Um, she was brilliant. Uh, musician I'm not I, I just play <laughs> I mean she had she had she had she had a different mission right she came in another time on this um, hurt planet and she uh, accomplished and I have other things to do so um, we're different but I, I carry a lot of her heritage with me mm. even my father even my father definitely so and that 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 uh, I love that line in this poem but that actually relates to well, both of us, but I painted the world for your battles and I blew the wind of love, which will guide you. That, you know, streaming in the painting metaphor, <laughs> which is wonderful, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, um, it's it's a wonderful poem. And and I, like I said, every, every one I read, I was like, ah, oh, wow. Oh, and that's so nice to hear. <laughs> it is. Thank you for sharing that. I'm sure that. when you wrote it, you never imagined that some guy, <laughs> <laughs> no, never. I would never expect you uh, 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, but it was wonderful. I love those surprises and I, I'm open to the universe, to all these uh, surprises. They're gifts, you know, they're gifts that life gives us is to reconnect with wonderful people uh, that show up in our life for a moment and then they come back and we're at the same point, which is amazing. You know, we, we still have this connection and we share the same um, um, I mean, some experience, and we have lots of things in common. So it's, yeah, it's I, I remember you saying, uh, because I love to be, you know, as, as social as I, I can come across, I love to be alone in the studio. And I love to, you know, with that with my art. And um, so the, there's one last poem that I definitely want to share um, with our listeners. It's interesting. I read it and um, I was like, what is this about? You know, I, I, I could feel, I could feel that there was, there was a story behind it and believe it or not. So I Googled the name. Um, I hope I pronounce it right. Marielle. Oh, Marielle. Yes. And did you, did you learn who she, was she? So I did, but you, I'll let you share that with our uh, listeners. Um, I did. I Googled it. Just the first name. And yeah, she's and, everywhere. Yeah, she was an activist in Brazil. Um, we call the favelas, the, the shacks, you know, the very poor neighborhood. Um, she was a, she's a sing, she was a single mother. Uh, later, I think she became homosexual as well. So she was a representative representative of the LGBT on the. Uh -huh. Yeah, on the on. The, I didn't even see that in the bio. You know I, that, yeah. So <laughs> she she was totally out of the box of the society. So on the, on the marginalized communities, and she she studied. She did a master's um, at PUC, is a, a Catholic university in Rio de Janeiro, and she became a voice. She she was representing uh, this population um, through. Um, politics and they they assassinated her uh still they don't know who did it i think they have an idea in the why i think somehow she was threatening uh local powers so well what's interesting yeah. which is so relevant right now yeah is she protested police brutality yeah. and um i i think it said in in wikipedia that it was they arrested two policemen uh, uh, re ex, retired ex, ex, ex police. So they are not the official uh, police. They are people retired or they leave and they create the militias, the militias. I don't know a lot of details about that, but it's like a, a parallel power exists and they control somehow they are connected with the traffic, uh, with games and, you know, uh, illegal games and things like that. So they try to silence her. Um, so I felt like, you know, here she is, this, she was beautiful. She was a beautiful mm -hmm. woman. She had the, like a strong voice. Someone comes from the shadow, you know, the shadow of society from the, 
the margin of society. And she had a voice and they tried to silence her and she became worldwide famous. Oh, you know, wow. It didn't work. It didn't well, I'm work. glad I got, like I said, when I read it and there's really no distinguishing in it, it's all there, but not, you know, there's no proper noun. There's no way for me to grab it. And I just yeah. Googled the name. And of course I knew where you're from. And I, I was like, oh, wow. And, and you're gonna love this. Um, I don't know if my listeners know this, but my son is biracial. And um, so I actually called him in the room and I read the poem to him. Oh. Yeah. Did you like it? Yes, he did. And I said, this is so beautiful. And so I'm gonna share it with our listeners, but I wanted him to hear it. And, and I think it is so relevant right now um, where we're talking about equality and, and being treated respect, equal. Respect and respect. Yeah. Respect to every woman being, you know, woman being. Yeah. Every human being, yeah. regardless of, of sexual orientation, skin color, ethnicity, uh, economic bracket. Right. I, I, it's, it's such a strong uh, message. Yeah. So. so are you going to read the poem? Yeah. <laughs> Unless you want to read it in uh, I can. Portuguese. I can try. I can try. I'll, I'll do it with my okay. accent. <laughs> Marielle. Black was her color. To glow was her de destiny, destiny. On her skin burned the sun, the companion of her life. Light was her banner, shadow her enemy. Her fire was extinguished, they silenced her voice. But her voice became history. In her cry, the pain of her people. In her action, a path for the oppressed. On a night without rain, on a night without stars, on a night silence fell and she, be she became more present. Uh. Yeah, so it, it's like uh, uh, some cases are happening in the United States. They think they silence like they have no importance and then suddenly they become icons. They right. become heroes. So I think is something to watch out. You know, you you can't just um, eliminate people like <laughs> like they have no voice, no value. It's it, we need to respect each other. We need to respect, and I I think that comes from home. You know, when you raise kids to give this sense of love and respect to each other. Yeah, you know, I I think I believe that uh, God is within all of us, yeah. spirit. And so we, we need to respect all those angles and it goes all ways, you know, to, to treat each other with love and respect in all ways, whether people agree with you or not, that, that we have to have that common ground, that common ground, then everybody can be expressing in their own uniqueness as long as they respect each other. Yeah, you know? there's space for everyone. That's the beauty, the beauty of universe. There's space for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I, that last, that final line, uh, and she became more present. She became a reference. She became a reference for movements, for people, for even for yourself. Now you, now you met Marielle. <laughs> I know. It, 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 isn't that interesting? Cause I had no, I had no experience of it. I read the poem and then I, I did the research and I was like, wow, this is so relevant. And so, and so in, this book is so wonderful because it has personal experiences of a woman or being a woman, motherhood, uh, women activists. There's just, it's just so well-rounded, you, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah and, it and, doesn't talk only about women, but talk, through women, you can talk about so many other things. Exactly, and, and, the, and the drawing of, of Marielle, the, the expression on her face is just wonderful. Yeah. She was a rebellious at the same time. So I think you can see that. <laughs> well, you yeah. captured it. You did. You, you, very, you very much I captured, captured it. energy. Again, I capture her energy. So I connect with her energy and I translate it through, you know, lines and some color. Well, yeah, I was going to gonna share one more thing. Um, I have become such a, a hunter of, of information. And so when I read... I get books and I get my yellow highlighter and I highlight things and I highlight things. And, and this reading your poetry was a real, at first it was a challenge for me. Um, 
because you you don't you you don't attack poetry. You you almost have to read it lightly. I I, I if I could exp it's like you read it lightly. You just read it without intensity and suddenly you feel it yeah you have you have to be silent again you have to be silent and and it's, it's just not the words it's just not the words it's the, the energy they carry is the sounds they carry and you need to be connected to really to really understand the meaning that is there so at first, when I opened your book and I'm plowing through like a like a bull in a china shop, just reading the lines, reading the lines, and then and then I was like, what what does this mean? And then I stepped back and I read it again, slowly and just lightly, without that focus, and suddenly I could just feel it. Wonderful! You know? I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. So so I was like, wow this is wonderful. <laughs> so I had a wonderful aha moment, a moment of awe with, with your book. Um, and, and I encourage, like I said, I encourage all the listeners to go out and purchase a copy. It's beautiful. Uh, it's a beautiful gift, but it's a, it's a beautiful gift for yourself. You know? Thank you. Yeah. It's available on Amazon. So it's easy to find uh, if you do women in flight and Leonor Alvin Brazo, you'll, you'll find that. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Well, thanks for, thanks for agreeing. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to share before we, uh, before we go, there's, yes. one, there's one more poem It's called Enigmas and is really about finding your voice. Mm. It's on the book flight page 28. Okay. It talks about myself finding my voice. Sometimes that voice is not that easy to find, right? Your, your uniqueness. So I think on this poem, um, through symbols, I talk about how I find, how I found my voice. Would you like me to read it? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, enigmas. That morning, the sea opened up. The storm spread across the sky. Waves with the smell of power, a sea that turned into sky, a sea that turned into earth. In the midst of the storm, I discovered my voice. It arrived serene, calm, sweet, with the taste of honey, with the wings of birds. It flew through open spaces and showed me without wavering new horizons. I felt the fear of flying. I called out to my ancestor for stories that could bring me certainty, certainties that no one could give. Until the risk of flight was ventured, the lightness of being lifted me. I, I closed my eyes and confronted this new space, new stories to tell, enigmas to decipher. It's all about enigmas, right? Thanks every time. Uh, in your life, I think you're always in interpreting it through your art. You are just recreating uh, enigmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. I see. I definitely see what you're saying. It's a perfect poem to end the the podcast because it's it speaks to us all. It speaks to the artist in us all. You know, and challenges to be ourselves, true to ourselves. Wonderful. Well, I'm glad you brought that one up, and I could share it. Like I said, it, I, I, I love it. And I love the, the aspect that you're, you're combining different talents. And I, I always encourage artists to not think you're one. You know, unfortunately, our society tries to put us in a category. You know, oh, you're a painter. You're a musician. Not you're me. a writer. Not me or you. Not <laughs> me or you. <laughs> I know. I could be a writer and an artist. Yes. Yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you very much. Um, and uh, I appreciate you being on the show. And we'll talk to you soon. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Spiritual Artist Podcast. Whether you're following the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts, make sure you choose the subscribe button so you'll receive new segments when they're released. Plus, check out my new book, The Spiritual Artist, now available on Amazon.com. In the meantime, be still, listen, and know that you are a spiritual artist.